Well, I hope you're having a productive winter and staying attuned to the great science published in AJP Heart and Circulatory Physiology. Welcome to the February edition of the Video Table of Contents, or From the Editor's Desk. Judging from submissions for January, we're off to a great start in 2016. In February, we're publishing four reviews, 15 original research papers, and one letter to the editor. As you know, February is Heart Month, so it's appropriate to focus on some great cardiovascular research in our journal. Let's get started with a sampling. Interesting and timely review by Oliver and Laughlin. They discuss the value and mechanisms for both endurance and interval or sprint training on microvascular dysfunction in type 2 diabetes. Because diabetes can profoundly alter regulation of microvessels, it's important to understand mechanisms that may enhance microcirculatory function, especially in skeletal muscle. These authors discuss and provide data for different types of exercise that engage various muscle masses. Ultimately, the authors propose that the added benefit of combined resistance and aerobic exercise and vigorous intensity exercise programs is not simply more is better. Rather, the additional benefit is the result of exercise-induced adaptations in and around more muscle fibers, resulting in more muscle mass and associated adjustments in the microvasculature. This is a must-read for exercise physiologists. Diaz Otero et al. studied how aging alters biomechanical properties of cerebral arteries, a study relevant to stroke in the aged population. Pressure myography was used to examine vessel stiffness in posterior cerebral arteries and parenchymal cerebral arteries in mice. Old posterior cerebral artery vessels exhibited increased wall stress and stiffness. In parenchymal arteries from old mice, wall thickness and area were increased while wall stress was decreased. The authors conclude that age-associated remodeling occurs in small and large cerebral vessels that may increase the risk of cerebrovascular disease in aged subjects. Cardi et al. examined the activation of microglia in the paraventricular nucleus as a way of understanding inflammation-mediated sympathoexcitation. They sought to determine if angiotensin II-mediated activation of microglial toll-like receptor 4, TLL4, signaling is a key molecular target initiating oxidative stress in the PVN. Evidence is provided in support of this concept along with increased oxidative stress. Increased oxidative stress were dependent on TLL, TLR4. Interestingly, evidence was also provided for a non-AT1 source of oxidative stress in the PVN. These results support a functional interaction between the central renin-angiotensin system and innate immunity in the regulation of neurohumeral outflow from the PVN. In an interesting review by Kate Murphy, the field of cardiac atrophy that occurs during cancer cachexia is discussed. The source of this so-called cardiac cachexia is not well understood. Some of the proposed mechanisms and therapeutic strategies are discussed in this review. NERF2 is an important transcriptional regulator of antioxidant enzyme production and helps to maintain oxidative stress at relatively low levels. While NERF2 null mice exist, Priestley et al. sought to produce a rat NERF2 knockout model. They specifically focused on impaired endothelial function in abnormalities exhibited during salt-induced angiotensin suppression. Sprague Dolly rats had a 41 base pair deletion that included the start codon of the NERF2 gene. This mutation prevented the translation of NERF2 protein, and many NERF2 targeted antioxidant enzymes were significantly lower in livers from NERF2 null, mat, null rats fed high salt. Endothelial dependent responses were examined in the middle cerebral arteries of high salt versus wild type and NERF2 null rats. The results of the study indicate that suppression of NERF2 antioxidant defenses play an important role in development of salt-induced oxidant stress, endothelial dysfunction, and microvessel rarefaction in normotensive rats. NERF2 will be an important target for therapy, and this rat model will provide new important mechanistic information in hypertension and other cardiovascular disease states. 
Thank you for listening again to this video table of contents for February. Remember, we publish a wide variety of cardiovascular science, so there's sure to be something for everyone. Send us your best work now. Valentine's Day is coming up, or has already happened, depending upon when you're watching this. This should be a reminder to support cardiovascular research for you and your loved ones. See you next month.